let you know you have a record. Yeah, no, I did, yep. I did get your copy. So do we have something to discuss? Any changes? I was only, not with respect to the 10th, but I was not here on the 24th. I've seen them both, and uh, I don't have any comment. Okay, I move we accept both. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Ayes. Okay, so that's done. Are there any public comments? Well, let's keep moving. So um, this is probably our biggest agenda in a while, for sure, if not ever. And um, I thought <clears throat> what I'd like to do is kind of just uh, go over these briefly as a list and then start digging into these. So we have actually really three MAPC proposals. We have the proposal that was made originally last year or earlier this year, mm -hmm. which was the uh, $38,000 proposal. Since then, um, which, they did not get funding for. <clears throat> which we did not yeah. get funding for, and which is still out there as a proposal. Mm -hmm. Since then, uh, Barry Keppard has uh, provided us with two additional proposals. One is a proposal for the scope of work that the MAPC would recommend which I believe is roughly $64,000. <clears> so about a third more than the uh, original proposal, uh, but uh, significantly more comprehensive. And then the third proposal is a proposal, is actually a slimmed down proposal from the original one, which was 38. This uh, latest proposal would be uh, for um, $23,000, and this is built around um, what we estimated we might be able to scrape together in funding based on the um, kind of small stipend that we were given for 2012, uh, which is um, uh, is the, like the 9800 or something like that. And then um, DLTA funds, the, uh, matching, fu not quite matching, but funds that Barry would be um, proposing to request from the DLTA that would get us to 23. So <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about there are these proposals um, and the um, implication of those on uh, agenda item number eight, which is the 2013 bu budget planning. Mm. So what I want to get out of that uh, and I'm just proposing that we get out of that discussion on budget planning is as we enter a new fiscal year um, and we have to make a proposal, if we are going to request funding for next year, we have to have a proposal in by um, December 14th, so in two weeks. Um, <clears throat> that likely should include the MAPC, but I also want to talk about other things that we want to, um, we would want to request if anything. Um, Colin coming out of our presentation of the survey results. Um, John Dennehy, you know, kind of brought up the issue of, you know, part-time staffing. Mm -hmm. And with regards to the budget planning, we would need to talk about if we wanted to make a request for something like that, we'd need to start talking about, you know, what it, you know, what that role would do and, and what the cost would be. So those, the MAPC uh, certainly folds into the budget planning. Um, so, and do we have a copy of a budget request that was successful so that we know what, how to model it? Um, we have a, no, we have a template, a and blank template. And the guidelines. And okay. the guidelines. I'm sure there are Which, examples of bad budget requests and there are examples of good <coughs> budget requests. Is okay. there, yeah, can I we mean, get the, examples of The template of is just kind of frosting on the cake. I mean, the important thing is how much money you're asking for and how does it fit into, you know, Trisha's overall plan for the town and the overall you know, budget for the town. But I imagine that the basis of being approved or not approved or being upside or downside is based upon the merits of what you're doing. And since there's no precedent for it, right. there's no budgetary saying, well, it's just like last year, we yeah. have to model it against something. Is there a way to get yeah, an example? I can certainly share my budget from last year and, you know, if that, if that helps. Is this new? 
entire, it was my impression that this was a new format structure. It was new um, two right. years ago. Oh, okay. So there is something. Uh, in fact, I think I printed some out on the big copy machines, so when I look and see it's about an eight-page yeah. template, and then there was some of it. Once you do it the first year, right. you can carry it forward. With, and, mission and some statement. Of it you'll have like right. a mission statement. You have yes. one of those, yep. and you just pop that in. You talk about your accomplishments. I mean, some of it is actually not unpleasant <coughs> to write out because you're talking about all the things that you did that you're proud of. So, yep. You know, not to be too much of a cheerleader for budgeting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, uh, in the materials that were circulated, there's a schedule of review by both the selectmen and the advisory committee yeah. where as a board, we're not identified. I didn't yeah. know. Are we being reviewed as part of planning, or is there? Is um, that you're just part to of be the selectman's budget? Yeah. But you know, for whatever reason, Tricia asked me to. Yeah, you know, I said, well, do they need to do this? You know, should I let them know? And yeah. she said, yeah, they need to go through this process. Yeah. Okay. So. so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Or maybe a lot more. Um, the annual report, I believe, Tricia was actually to the planning board. Is the is the most imminent one, and let me just go back to my notes. So they have requested a meeting with us on this on the twentieth, yes. And they're looking for, I think, a little bit of a view backwards on what we've done, as well as a view forwards as far as our areas of focus and potential initiatives, etc. So um, between the budget due on December fourteenth and the planning board presentation on the twentieth, we have. Um, those are the two most press, pressing things that we have. Um, you know, we can talk about out, outreach to local businesses, which I think has been on our agenda for a little while and certainly is a uh, item coming out of the survey discussion that we've had. Um, future areas of focus probably rolls into a lot of the discussions that we're going to have with the planning board uh, regarding the planning board meeting and potentially budgeting. Um, so points, uh, yeah, point seven. Driftway development I will come back to, but what I just wanted to do is just let you know what that's all about. And this is something that Laura came to me about. There is a uh, building going up on the driftway. It's commercial with some tenants above, so some mixed use. Um, they're out of town builders, and they are looking for some help from some place um, regarding you know, what kinds of businesses you know, might be best suited to go into that space. Do we know where it is? Laura, we're, I'm just giving them a little uh, preview of item number nine, which is the driftway development. And you had mentioned where it was. I did capture them in my notes. Do you recall? There's some condos called the Riverway. Um, they're almost directly opposite the MBTA uh, parking. And there's a on the opposite uh, side of the, of yeah. the road mm -hmm. yeah. on the ocean side right yeah okay and there's a, a little kind of vacant you know empty lot in front of those condos and what they're proposing is a building out there that's going to be the same style as the condos <coughs> they're kind of a nice you know, nice pleasant looking building but the people are from the Everett area and they're not familiar with what is going to sell in situate what people need um, you know, maybe even just sending him a copy of your survey might might be helpful to him. But um, if you are interested in meeting with someone like that, I think they'd be interested in meeting with you. But it's you know it's not there's no requirement to right. do that. Right, and so that we have not volunteered or been volunteered. I just wanted to bring that up for discussion because I think one of the key questions is <clears throat> would something like that be within the scope of the EDC? Uh, and I'm not sure that it is. So I just want to talk about that and uh, or, you know, is it something that we see might logically be an offshoot of the EDC that we, we might want to explore over time. So that's the gist of point number nine. There's this uh, economic development boot camp coming up in Plymouth that we can talk about and then, you know, with all the extra time that we have, <laughs> we can talk about other business. So that's uh, just a quick overview of the agenda. Let's go back then and talk about the ME. Uh, MAPC proposal, which we now have three of, and I think um, what I wanted to ask is, um, I guess, kind of how we get to um, 
a point of view on which one we want to propose and which one we want to fight for. I went through the $23,000 proposal and the $64,000 proposal to try to get a sense for how they differ. And, um, and they differ a lot, you know. So there is an awful lot of um, extra work which seems to me to be very valuable that would be part of that $64,000. Do either of them come with funds or they have to be funded? Um, the 64000 would need to be funded. The 20 In total or more net, um, net what well, we, we the, think we already have the, in our kitty? The net would be less whatever we, don't, we think we, we can contribute ourselves. Or okay. that the um, well, right? I mean, we're looking at any or any matching we're assuming funds that eight we get. for the twenty-three. You make the same assumption there. Right. Uh, we'd have to come up with fifty-six. Yeah. I guess what I'm more curious about between the twenty-three and the sixty-four is is it a matter of a material difference in scope, or is it a phasing issue? And could we phase it if we we have money now? And it certainly seems attainable to do something like the $23,000 effort. If that was a preliminary piece, that might make some sense. I'd have, a, I'd have more concerns about thinking we're going to secure $56,000 next year mm -hmm. to do a larger study, not get it, and you're two years out with nothing. Uh, I think that's a good question. Um, I just want to clarify one thing. Laura, my understanding is I just we, I think we need to stay away from looking to spend the 2013 funds that we think may come in but may ultimately not, right? Patricia frowns on that, I believe. 2014. Or 14. Um, it, well, she seemed to frown on it and then at your meeting she yes. seemed to almost encourage it. Well, uh, I mean, not what, exactly, well, but, well but she seemed to be saying at the meeting my uh, when we presented it was my read that the what, what is our nine thousand that yes. we have for fiscal year twenty thirteen right now? Yes, could be carried. It could be carried into fiscal year fourteen with additional funds. Whatever those additional funds are, we don't know, and I don't think you know anybody's willing to give us any sort of indication on that. That would be the basis of the budget. Are we going to fight for you know something right. like an equal allocation, and we end up with eighteen? Uh, in fiscal year 14, or yep. are we going to look for something that could actually fund a $64,000 study? And my concern there is if, if you don't get it and we haven't moved yet, because these budget decisions won't be made until right. May. Right. Um, you know, we're still, we're still no, nowhere. And, and then there's still, in my mind anyways, a larger question as to whether or not any of this scope is relevant right now. Because um, you and I had had a discussion mm -hmm. about with the limited funds we have and the activity in town at the moment, do we look at this site by itself, which may be an affordable scope of what work? Site? The town hall site <coughs> that's being targeted for a middle school or a public use. Well, I think that that's, has uh, a tremendous amount of dependencies with the steering committee. So, right. Well, that's money, time, sequence, whether it happens or not, a little bit. So, well, except the the point of it was is that. All of the discussions regarding the capital plan, the school, and everything else have been around using this site for public use. They've and they've been saying that publicly. It w they've been saying publicly it will be used. There's no information and there's no counterargument or even analysis as to whether or not that's a good thing. And maybe it is, uh, but it's not even being addressed. And with the limited funds we have and the the fact that those efforts are moving regardless of everything else and they're moving at frankly a phenomenal speed comparative to anything else in town that maybe we want to look at right that angle so that's what we were kind of saying is uh, really focus this study on one particular place and one particular situation um, yeah go ahead so I mean of limited knowledge of what's going to happen in the steering committee, right? And of limited knowledge of we've they've approved a set of feasibility studies. Essentially, you can think but not do was kind of where they are right now. Right. Um, if we were to focus here, there'd be so many dependencies that would precede us that we would be building we'd be building the plan on top of like a maybe. If we were to focus on a location, I would I would recommend and we want some 
something to come of it. Some, you know, basically it's, it's premised on a set of knowns is to go to existing economic centers of the harbor, north situate, or the driftway. Because here it's, it's, and they voted for feasibility, but you know, the studies, the timing, all the different things that have to go into that, it's unclear how that story unfolds. Yeah, I, th I think that's fair. So I think we've always sort of thought of situate in three major centers, those mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think that's a good way to organize it, which is let's get as concrete as we can. Let's get with a business group, group that's organized there, um, and really go deep with it, so we can we can actually take an action coming out of it. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the, I mean, just kind of going back to the original question is, is economic development being taken into consideration in any of the feasibility studies that are proposed for? been taken into consideration in terms of the steering committee. Uh, it is, or it will, well, it's by, it's, by its, mem by its, by its membership, membership, it's it's supposed it to be. I mean, but I, I, it's how that plays with the feasibility study and how those roll together will will be known once that steering committee forms. Does this? And I don't know this answer. So, does this? Um, I'm not sure the relationship between the steering committee and whoever it is that that literally puts together the scope of a study. So I assume that there are going to be third parties that are being hired to to, yes. to conduct the research. And where does the decision to include economic development as a facet of that study um, come from? In the steering committee. It does. So the steering committee will That's help to frame the scope of the third party research. Is what you you understand? Well, and it's also it's a feasibility study, so it's not. It's I don't know how you would check feasibility of economic development. It's more how does the plan open itself up for that opportunity? Right. It's it's not feasibility. It's more opportunity driven. Um, and the, my understanding is the steering committee would be looking at that okay. in concert with the feasibility study. How they relate, how often they relate, I don't know. Okay. And how that's decided, I don't. Okay. And I can go to the who and the when. And the Got it. But it's yeah. one of those things where, it's, I mean, to this very conversation, there are so <laughs> many unknowns associated with it. To talk about it is a little bit like stealing oxygen. I mean, we just don't know. Yeah, and I don't think, and my point is not that we should be looking at countering an argument of a school. It's it, really the point is, is there economic development value to this parcel? Yeah, it's not about and schools, it's about locations. Well, well yeah. the, the issue is I'm not sure I'm not sure how this parcel and will play if out. Somebody, well, yeah, I don't, but we don't, we, we don't know that with respect to any parcel, frankly, unless we own well, it, the, and we do own this one. Well, we know this, that this would be a net new economic center, right? right? We do know the harbor is an existing one. We do know our situ is an existing right. one. We do the drift But if we're going to get concrete, and for example, in the harbor, what's the site and how? We would have to, that's what the study would right. dig into. But at least it has more known okay. to it. It's not premised on things moving around for, you know, in the timing of that. Yeah, I understand the point. And, and at that point in time, you'd, you'd say, with the monies granted to the feasibility study, you'd want to tap into the idea, monies. The right, that are in the feasibility study. I would, I would separate the budget considerations into two parts. This is the here and now, and whatever falls out of that is money should be set aside to economic development should be seen as an offset to the cost of that whole infrastructure. Right. Right. Exactly. Or how can it be? And I, I, the concern, the way this came up, is that every discussion about those plans that have been taking place have taken for granted this site and the fact that it should be a public use. They've, it's been said publicly by the people in charge of those studies mm -hmm. that this site will be a public use. And it's actually been said conclusively that if the school is approved, it'll be built here. Now, it's not, you know, the end game, but, I mean, those, those comments are being made. Questions, I've asked questions about whether or not any of the funding that's been approved to date, either the 750 or whatever amount it actually is for the school, or the capital plan for all of the public facilities, could in fact include that analysis. And right. look at, and uh, particularly because the 750 came in, and in my mind, there should be some overlap between what that studies doing and what the 375 is doing. And if there is some overlap, there should be some uh, credits available to apply to a scope of work that wasn't considered previously, which seems to be economic development. 
So I, I mean, I would, and I would love to see it per, per, you know, proceed that way rather than us taking our limited budget and mm -hmm. applying anything. I agree with that entirely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. And I think that's what we should be fighting for. And that's what I mean. The steering committee. I mean, that 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 is going to be a point of reference, which is with that kind of expenditure expected. Right. You have be. to go build offsets into that. Right. No. So. Okay. So let me go back to your earlier question, which was: Is this larger proposal something that could be phased, or not? Right. Now. It just seems to, I'm not sure. Can I, can I ask a question? Just, just, just do. When do we need to decide on the 64 or 23? What is the timing of that? Um, there, I don't know that there is specific timing. I think Barry wants to get a proposal in front of um, his folks as soon as possible, and he fleshed out a, a rough proposal for us, um, making the case for why Situate should be funded. Um, and so I think he's he's ready to go because I think in the next you know within the next month he, you know after the first of the year things might start to um, start to move on on funding. Yeah, the, the, reason, the reason I'm asking the question yeah. is that right, we haven't read the 64K one, so it's probably easier to have the have the conversation after we read it because then we would okay know if, if, if you have how, how it, that's you know we might have some ideas how it could be phased. Yeah, I've read the 23K one, but not the 64. So, um, if we need to table that, then let's. How? It, the 64.5 here, it, there's a total cost. In terms of the town share versus, I assume DLTA is the f grant funds we'd be asking for. Right. How does that break out on the 64? I mean, is it. It, do, it doesn't say. Yeah, no, it doesn't. That's what. I mean, I, we would get 15, from 15 and then so it is right, it is on us. Okay, yeah. yeah. The feeling I was getting from Barry was the same that you got, Chris, that he wants us to submit something in the next, you know, the next week or so. So, um, you know, but I, I keep also hearing that if we can't do that, it's all okay, you know. So. Well, it's, I don't know, we, I don't, taken. yeah, I mean, we have. We haven't seen that. We would need to look at it. Had yeah. to, we'd want to have a conversation based upon a, some form of diligence, on, some yeah. due diligence on that versus yeah. a yeah. esoteric conversation of, you know, could contracts be phased? Yes. Right. So um, we have our next meeting scheduled the second week in um, December, second Wednesday of December. And so, I mean, if we need to put Barry off in, until then, we can certainly do that. But I think we need to plan and to... Mean, in the meantime, someone can just ask Barry, what is the, what is the real life, you know, right. I mean, no if we, kidding date. So yeah. we're not chasing shadows around. And if we need to meet before then, I'm sure we could yeah. meet before then. And it could... I'm going to go back and look and look at my last email from him. And while I'm back there, should I print out any more of those $64,000 checks? Because I don't know if I can... Uh, if I could put, put it for myself, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I have. But. Okay, so let's do that. And let's plan to come back by the 12th of December at the latest yep. with the goal of uh, coming out of a discussion with a group consensus on which one of these plans we want to try to recommend. Yeah, I mean, I think it's okay for, and we can talk to the folks who aren't here, to, we owe you an email within the next five days that says, here's our thoughts on the two because we've all had a chance to look at them. That would be great. And that sure. way we're working off a set of known data yep. versus... That would be great. Group thinks always hard. Got that, Trish? I do. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, okay, so let's keep moving because we do have a lot to cover. So MAPC will come back to within the next two weeks. Yep. Uh, annual report to the planning board. So that would be on the 20th of December uh, at, the, at that meeting that they'd like us to get in front and talk about what what have we been up to and what we think our our plan is for moving forward. So, um, you know, I think we could certainly talk about the survey results. We, by that time, could probably talk about um, our recommendation for this MAPC proposal and uh, catch them up to date on that. Um, we could talk about funding as far as what we have requested, which needs to be in by the 14th. So we can talk about what our funding request was. 
and then um, we need to kind of have a discussion on, you know, I think where we see our focus in uh, in the coming year, starting in January. As an offshoot of number seven on the agenda. Yep. Excuse me? As yes. an offshoot of number seven on the agenda. I yeah. thought that, oh, okay. I was thinking it was five, not five. We're on five. No, we it's not put up seven as the discussion of future areas. Right. That's right. what that's is referring yes. to. Yes. Okay. Right. So um, we're going to need um, probably some volunteers to help put something together for that. I'll be happy to volunteer. Okay. Happy being a relative <laughs> word. Yeah. And my, and my guess, Chris, is that, um, I mean, just singing off the top of my head is, you know, we began this, we looked at a set of individual efforts um, that that approach didn't really bear fruit for a variety of reasons. Yeah, I think we, we changed game plans to look at more larger contiguous areas, which is what's going to come out of number seven. We recognize that without the budget, mm -hmm. we're sort of hamstrung a bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, we we have a candid discussion about what the survey was from both the residents and business area, and what that tells us about number seven. Right. Right. I think that's and we, exactly I think right. the key thing is what stake do we have or how do we, the largest mm -hmm. town effort in terms of financial and people capital is going to be that infrastructure mm -hmm. and, and what, what is it we expect out of that. And, um, yeah. A little bit to Colin's mm -hmm. point, which is you, you have to put something in there and the town has to rally, rat, rally around that. Yeah. Do we have a date on that? On December twentieth. Twentieth. The twentieth. Yes, okay. at the planning board meeting on twelve twenty. Okay. Okay. So let's keep moving because we're going to end up talking a little bit more about those okay. planning board. So meetings. what I'll do is I'll commit to sending at least a table of contents out um, by this coming Sunday to everybody. Okay. At least everyone gets some visibility to it. Mm -hmm. um, great. Okay. Outreach to local businesses, which also kind of folds into, um, let's, um, let's fold that into number seven and start talking about future areas of focus, of which reaching out to local businesses could be one. And uh, I think it's more than could be. I, mean, I think we've committed to good point. Yes. rectifying the Right. Yeah. The business survey that was the six is is a, is a how to engage the right. seven. Uh, that's how right. I kind of see it's necessary. Without it, you. Right. I think that um, is a great example, Colin, of one that we we definitely have committed to. Uh, obviously, I think another future area of focus is some sort of, you know, getting a, a request into MAPC at some level. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that something that we definitely but want is it, to do? Are you on number seven right now? I am on number seven. Did you, you ask for inputs from everyone. Did everyone give you inputs on this? Uh, I got some. I did not get all. Was there any? Oh, areas, you mean? We're not very good at homework. Yep. We'd, no, I got you. I know what you're <laughs> We'd be flunking this course. Um, was there any anything interesting in what you got, or no, nothing new? No, nothing new. Because um, I know I, I sent something, and you know my thought process was it was sort of the take the simplest approach possible, which right. is you only have a select set of economic centers. Um, you're gonna, you're going to go engage the developers and the business groups that are there. Yes. Um, and you're going to work sort of inside out from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. The driftway being, I think, different because that just the land opportunity there is just different than right. the other two. Um, and I think we have a point a point person from this group on each of those areas, and then we, there's a steering committee on the town infrastructure, which I'm now point on. Mm -hmm. So now we'd have four major points of, and, and the it, things like six are part of how we do that how we look at North Situate or how we look at the driftway. And then going back to this proposal from um, 
from Barry is we then we then come back and say of the four, three being you know concrete and one being kind of in flow. Right. If we wanted to go to this route, which one do we want to point them at? Because we've gone in and said that that looks the most ready. The business guys are mm -hmm. are ready. There, if it's north situate, the infrastructure prioritization has been worked out with sewage, wh whatever the things are. That's how it allows us to go after big contiguous items that would have yield on, you know, to the town. And I think that makes a ton of sense. What do you think, Trish and Colin? I think it makes sense of your the four. Points though being harbor, north situate, driftway, and facility. capital, yeah. Facility, yeah. capital right. planning. Yeah. Where does three A fit in? Driftway. I mean that's what, okay. Uh, does it? Yeah, because a three A here would be part of the three A here and up the street. And then north would be, would be in play for the capital plan. North situate would take three A up there. Okay. So that's how I would like to. I agree. You're that's almost segmenting three right. A. That's how I would like to think of it. Yeah, I thought you were connecting right. all of three A to the driftway, which I no. did not. Uh, I would like to think of it that way. I would way. never do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that makes sense. Not on film, yeah. particularly with North Situate. I think right. that's that's the ideal way to be looking at North Situate development. And I'll be honest with you, I think that approach that you just outlined is what the planning board would like to see us do. Yeah, right. So a year or a year and a half ago, what we said is, oh, we have you know our top 10 list and we have all these things. And now what we're doing is, I think, retrenching a little bit and saying, OK, you know what? We have one or two things that we're really going to focus on. Yeah. I mean, there's a, I'll say it and then move on so I don't blow time up. But you know, there's, a, there's items in the top 10 list that are still in play, to my knowledge. Yes. The restaurant tax, the dock fees, and other things. Yes, I'll include them in the readout to the planning yes. board, yes. right? And I think we, what we want to do is find out where where those where they are, right? where yeah. those frogs and bunnies are, right? Well, I think with those items, yeah, we we move them within the scope of our jurisdiction, right. and they're, yeah. they're which I still think is correct, and I just don't right. know if it if do they lack a champion? Is it someone needs to go do what? Right. Did it get killed? I, Really don't know what Are you talking about the meals tax? Or? Yeah. yeah, restaurant tax. Right? Well, that seems to be moving again. That seems um, to be very much alive. The question, I think, is what that revenue would be. Um, would it be allocated? Yeah, allocated to yeah. allocated allocated general correct. fund. Right. Correct. Because that's, that's an important. Our thing. thought process was that's a that's a development fund. Right. Exactly. Correct. Which is what we suggested when we recommended correct. it. Correct. At, at the at the selectmen's meeting. Correct. Which I think we need to be consistent on every time we present it. Yeah, if nothing else, then being selfish. <laughs> right, so, um, you know, that's something that will probably, could and, and may come up for the spring town hall. Right. And so when? that in the next month or two months probably, um, when the warrant, you know, the warrant is set really early. So that's mm -hmm. something that we cannot, you know, just kind of put on the back burner. No, this this week part of the planning board and I, and I think we should, we should, I'm not sure what the timing of the, the board readout is, but to your point, our our key thing is, because we sent letters to Tony, that was a chairman at the time, to Tony advocating for it, clarifying it. We did the town comparisons for it with Dan. Dan did a lot of that work as well. Right. Um, and to your point, we, we basically said we understand how to use those funds so they're not just you know, taking from Paul to give someplace so we don't know, but actually using it as a right. revenue generation right. for the town. Right. I think what you need to do is to make a proposal for an article for the town yes. meeting and keep track of the dates where those articles get decided, where the warrant opens and the warrant closes. And I sent some kind of a memo to the selectmen telling them that you want to put this article forward and there seems to be support for it and do they agree? And um, you know, where they put it on the wall. Yeah. I mean, I, I, maybe that's, you know, it's oversimplifying a little and you can give all the no. background that you have. I know you have a lot of, you've done a lot of research and you have a lot of background on it. Um, so. Yes, I totally agree with that. Okay, so future areas of focus include 
um, reaching out to local businesses, doing the uh, we'll call the what we'll call the local local business district, district studies. The three plus one. Yes. We can actually have a marketing. We can call it three plus one. Yeah. And bring in the situate heritage. It's a little bit more like Ireland than we think, right? Um, yes, and then the meals tax is point number two, right? For sh for sure. Um, Are you on number seven still, or yes? I thought the three plus one was the entirety of number seven. The meal tax. We're just trying think, to figure out where it is. Well, I think it's the mechanism. I think it's. I, I think I like your approach that. Three plus one is the entirety of seven. The business outreach, the meals tax, are the mechanisms to implementing them. Okay. Yeah, because the meal tax provides the necessary funding. Right. Yeah. Colin, you said the meals tax and what else? And the business outreach. Yeah, okay. Uh, I do think in terms of business outreach to address six as a specific initiative, we do have to do have some yes. sort of uh, uh -huh. initial launch. Of some of some form, but the right. business outreach as a component of the future areas of focus needs to be something regular. I don't know if we do something similar to um, the maritime forum yep. as a kickoff, mm -hmm. and then start just hosting, you know, once a month. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> um, I think that was a phenomenally effective way of reaching out to people and. Being, you know, gaining a ton of learning and opening, you know, uh, conversation. So I've always felt that that would be a great way of, you know, starting the three plus one. Yeah. I mean, just in looking ahead, number nine. Yes. You see, sort of started with the question, you know, should we? Yes. And absolutely we should, I think. And yes, it's within our purview, and, and yes, it would be part of the three that looks at the driftway, yeah. because one of the things we'd want to find out is, well, how'd you do that? Why'd you yeah. come? Yeah, I mean, why did you Well, that's, yeah, that's the first question. <laughs> yeah. um, other than the cool view, what was you thinking? Um, well, it's also, yeah, and, and what made you invest here without knowing? Do we, need, do we need it to move on that? The motion to set up a meeting? I don't know. Set up a meeting we, with the, the proposed developer, the individual who said to Laura that there would be there's interest in meeting with us. I'll put that I think, well, why don't well, we sure I move move to meet with them? Yeah, so exactly. When in doubt, yeah. make a move. So okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we've we've, so we've had developers here before, so yes, I think we have. It's, you know, yeah. yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I might have need to make a move on it. No. We, now we're, we're well, being since, filmed. Since so the safety, motion's been made, safety and seconded, first. Yeah. Um, and I do think, I mean, just at this point, I do think it's worthwhile. You can't make assignments because the three people who aren't here would be, by definition, own things. Right. <laughs> if, mm -hmm. you know, Dilbert works. But I think for the next meeting, is to find who wants to run point on these different items. Right. Yes. And so, Trish, if you could uh, kind of flesh that out a little bit in the meeting notes, that'll sure. be helpful for everybody, uh, for those who <coughs> couldn't make it. There's still a motion out, uh, and I, I believe the motion is to... Um, to reach out to the this developer. to the developers who are working on this driftway, absolutely, uh, and seconded. and to yeah. meet with them. So you all in favor? You yeah. yeah. No, you made it. You 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 At least I'm self consistent. <laughs> 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 okay. Colin seconded. So uh, all in favor? I think I, we have okay. have the eyes. So I, we yeah. will. So now, let's talk about um, how we do that for a minute. Oh, so the twelfth. Well, do we want to do it in our next meeting? Yeah. We're gonna on the twelfth. Well, we will be budget. two days out from the budget yeah. being due, Probably and not. two weeks out from the planning board. And also, we're we're How close if we is met, this it would be a person? public forum. Yes, I imagine I think they don't want to be in a public forum. I think we can do this all. I think we can do a non-quorum meeting with them and talk because they yes. they can then share whatever they want to share. Do they have time frames that, you, that you're aware of? I think they're exploring what what they're going to be doing, but I don't think it's anything. Are they ground broken? No, no document signed, no permits are they issued. Permit? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, they are. are permitted, oh, but, okay. Um, things have kind of stalled with that building, so. Um, okay. I think they need a little encouragement 
um, that you know, they're they're on some path that you know may may lead them to success. It feels like well, there's a backstory. There's always a backstory. Oh, but it's, <laughs> exactly. It's just whether it's good or bad. Wait for the background music. <laughs> We can we can Do, talk to them. Yeah, yeah. Send okay. a couple of people to talk and, with. So, them. would you mind sending me their contact and maybe reach so, out to them and say the EDC is um, interested in helping? Yeah. And um, if you could provide their contact information to me, we will get a, a core team to set something off, up with them offline in the next few weeks. Actually, you know what, uh, Laura? Would you mind also asking them about timing? Is this something that they're really anxious to um, get immediate help on, or is this something that could wait until after the first of the year? Given some of our presentations coming up and in the holidays, if it's not super pressing, we might want to push, push this until okay. January. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so I think we nailed point seven, the future areas of focus for now, and that as that's kind of as it applies to um, like an agenda item for the planning board presentation, as well as providing those who are not able to make this meeting with a little bit of a heads up mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to need some, some project leads for each of those other three. You're the project lead for the plus one, but we'll need project leads for the three areas. Um, I want to go back. Do we have any other anything else we want to cover on um, either six point six or seven? In terms of project leads, what are we looking to actually assemble and put together? So, I, um, what I was thinking is, if we have these three areas: the driftway, North right. Stitch with the harbor, and what we talked about is uh, our is business outreach mm -hmm. as a mechanism to. Um, start that investigation that maybe we would have a lead go out to each one of those three areas to start to, you know, I, I'm, I don't think anyone's ever reached out to the um, Harbor Merchants Merchant. Association, for example. No, you did. Um, as I said, I don't think anybody's ever reached out to <laughs> <laughs> the Harbor Merchants Association. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey. Um, you can sit at the big table. Pull up a chair. Huh? You can sit at the big table. Okay. Pull up a chair. And a book. Well, you are on TV. <coughs> so I'm glad you uh, dressed <laughs> right. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, And I also think that we, uh, what asset work that we've done before to look at the buildings and land use and other things. That's why I was be, asking. Because I started looking areas. at. Or situate and the like. So, right. Just, just, just they're basically creating a package of work for. Right. Right. So, we were just talking about the businesses, current land use. Any North Stitch would have infrastructure considerations. The driftway, I would suspect, has different considerations. Um, uh, you know, uh, environmental considerations. Uh, Landowners. With the T. I mean, there's a site at the dump that's available. No. But I also think it's worth looking at um, other plans that have been put together in the past. The harbor, the old harbor plan. Yeah, there's one there for every place. Harbor. There's one for the driftway. There's one right. for North Citrus. There's one for the harbor. And those are not really all that old. I mean, no. And they're not all that off the off the mark no, too. When you, when you leave them, reason, yeah. That's a nice one. And just the, the pace <laughs> of change uh, would suggest that some of that work is sort of related to this work, which is they've, they've already done some of the market studies, others, that at least really gives us a, a starting point. Yeah. Um, Laura, I was going to ask you, as it applies to developers, um, or any of us, is, are the recommendations that we want to make as far as, you know, what kinds of developers um, we would want to include in any kind of forums? 
in those areas? I mean, my, my thought process of that is, is because they're not going to think of it the same way we'll think of it. They right. won't think of it in terms of the turf way. They're going to think of best opportunity. Similar to what we did for the maritime is to actually have a developer that right. we'll bring them all in. Yeah, Whoever that's what I'm saying is, is I think um, it's a different. how do we, what's that? I think it's a different piece. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I was just going to ask Laura if, you know, if you had some recommendations on who to bring it. So I, I missed that meeting where the guy from Cohasset came in. Oh, yeah. I mean, it right. sounds like somebody like, like him would be yeah, you know, certainly a, a list. A, an yeah. example of somebody who could be really valuable. Mm -hmm. That might be a question we put to the planning board because I imagine the planning board has seen them all. Right. By the okay, nature great. of their work. Great point. So just start so, there. Trish, if you could just note that, that we'll. And I'll put it in, I'll put it in the, for the 20th for the table of contents is to say that we. Perfect. Let's do it that way. So uh, in, in that presentation, we'll reach out to the planning board for a list of developers that we could, you know, if we could put like a little um, you know, consulting group together, sure. um, an advisory panel, Correct. who would they recommend? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, now, we skipped to nine, and I think we knocked off nine. Um, Jack, you missed that. I, I won't recap the whole meeting, but uh, quickly, the driftway development, there is some development. Um, it looks like it's going to get started on the driftway, a mix of commercial and, and residential, um, from some out-of-town developers who are looking for some help trying to figure out, you know, what kinds of businesses that they could bring in there, what would be, you know, right for Situate. And so we have volunteered to help with that. Mm -hmm. And um, Laura is going to get us their contact information, and hopefully uh, maybe after the first of the year we can meet with them and learn a little bit more about what they're doing and, and um, you know, why they selected that location and, you know, what some of the opportunities are that they see and maybe some of the challenges and how we can help. So that, that was just... Point nine mm. in a nutshell, but where I don't want to rehash it. But we're in the driftway. Mm -hmm. What it's section? Right across from uh, the Greenbush station. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's back there behind that medical center. Yeah, it's right next. to Oh, I know you're talking. And maybe kind of like behind the the Napa Auto Parts place back there, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that's that. But so now we got to kind of go back because I do want to talk a little bit more about the budget planning. I'm just kind of, I'm not quite sure where to go with that. Um, you know, we have an opportunity to make a request. And, and I honestly don't recall, how did the budget process work for us last year when we ended up getting $9,000? Last year, <clears throat> I included BBC in my budget because nobody else had done it. and. I knew you would need something. And that's that didn't right. turn okay. out to be, that wasn't the way it ended up. It ended up shifting from planning over to selectmen. So you're less an orphanage, more like a foster parent. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's a very satisfying role. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, um, it, it, it took some interesting twists and turns because at first, it looked like it was going to be a lot of work to get you some money, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, you became part of the selectman's budget, and that looked like um, that should make things easier, but then this year it looks like Trisha wants you to, you know, fill out the papers. And yep. Yeah, maybe not. Well, regardless of where it comes because, from, but, well, but yeah, I, I think... I, um, I mean, I can, I can help with some of it because there's some software that the town uses that you put the numbers yeah. into that... I don't know if there's a way for you to access that easily. So if you need me to, I can do that. Okay. But the bigger question is, what do we want to request? Right. And why? And, you know, and we need to make the case. And I think to your point earlier, Victor, you know, we can slap something together, but, but this has to end up being a bit of a sales pitch, um, I think. That, that's the way the whole template is set up. Yeah. Uh, the way it's worked in the past, and I think it's continuing, is that everything you request, you have to justify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it works. So um, 
I'm reaching out to you folks as far as how you guys think we should start that process. I think it's difficult well, to really um, answer that uh, empirically without understanding which of the three scopes that we think we're most interested in because if you talk about MAPC yeah I yep. am and, and and the other the other part of it too I think that's some somewhat related goes back to the discussion of the wider um, areas versus a discrete um, area where we know there are some developable immediate developable opportunities and the other thing too What's the impact of the survey, the results of the survey, on any of these proposals so that basically we can, we can weave them in as part of a, a solid component of work that we've already done. Now, you know, give us the rest <coughs> of, this, of it and, you, you know, we, this is what we can return to the town. So I think there's a couple of missing pieces that I'm not sure we can get to tonight. No, right. I, and I don't expect to come out of here with a with the budget tonight, but I would, I think. I think you can no. put budget structure tonight. I think yes. we need a structure, and I think we need to, we need to talk a little bit about, about the scope. So. Well, that's my, recognizing my point we is the scope, I think. Really. Well, <clears throat> recognizing, so are we in agreement that we want to um, request some level of funding for the MAPC study? Yes. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever that, that whatever, ends so up. So that's right. in, you There's know, between planning, A and B, B right? right? There are Something. planning funds. That yeah. I think we need. We just don't know the amount. Yeah, and, and it's that's a right. So, just to simplify our world, because there's a more unknowns than knowns. There's a planning side. Yeah. I think there's an incidental or execution. So if we're yeah, going to yes. do like a developer day and we have to buy coffee or we are going to yeah. do right. this or that, there's a way for us to fund that. Yeah. Um, so I just we should organize it sort of at that functional level. Okay. Right. Because we're, everything else we back, can be making. Right, right. and then right. We, we can back into numbers. Right. But I think well, we know more. But I do, and but that's exactly them, what I like to get at well, is, yeah. Some of them will be initiatives that, you know, they, they can't be entirely fleshed out yet. Right. I would like to include some number, I don't know what it would be, for website development. Yeah. For EDC, for an EDC site. Yeah, and whether, it, and that's where, you know, I don't know what exactly that means yet, because I think some of that is the discussion we need to have with the <laughs> business community. Uh, part of what I think is, grossly unfortunate is situate doesn't exist in cyberspace. Mm -hmm. You cannot find anything right. in this town on the internet. Right. Very few local businesses, if they have websites, for whatever reason, don't seem to turn up. And events in town, um, the inns, places to stay, places to eat, you know, just for whatever reason no, right, don't right. turn up. Uh, okay. So that's different and I totally agree with that. that. What I'm hearing is, and we've talked about this in the past, is some place something that can be a clearinghouse for Situate? Yeah. Everything you need to know, you know, could want to know about Situate can be found in, in that place. And uh, I agree, it doesn't exist right now. And I'm not and the much heralded top ten list was was that effort. Yes, I remember it was. We had csituate.com. Yes, yes. was the right. thing. Uh -huh. And then we were told the Chamber of Commerce was redoing their website, which I don't think it went very far. Or I'm not sure where it ended, but independent of that. We right. we need to do that on behalf of the town yes. and on the business community, right. and it's a service to the business community. So where exactly. we're trying to work with them to make headway on the three right. areas, it it it's a piece of that puzzle. Right. And I think that's a, that's the it's a service to the business community that the town can provide. Mm -hmm. I think there's on the same note, it's it's probably actually it could fall into the same line item if you're looking at a budget, as just basic marketing. Mm -hmm. I love marketing. They're so flexible. <laughs> <laughs> They're so intangible. <laughs> um, okay, great. So, MAPC at some level, incidentals for those, yeah. Right, I mean the maritime Meetings forum costs things. Yeah, last time we all, you know, somebody went and got the donuts and then we all went off in the corner and got our wallets out. And uh, so it'd be nice to... I made 20 bucks on overcharging everybody. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Website development. Um, and I don't, you know. I mean, certainly for the town, I think, I think also I could see a value in an EDC site that is more robust that maybe starts to serve as a central repository. Right, that's why I just don't know exactly what it is because I don't know that it's not just partnering with the chamber 
on a site that they're hosting, but they need some help. Uh, in yeah, it could be. My understanding was always that the, by the nature of the of the chamber being, it's a membership-based yes. organization. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be inclusive, all inclusive. If you imagine the site right. that I, I, I think right. you're referring to, you're going to do. You have to build the web environment to produce all the linking because they do have web pages you're linking to it. You have to produce it so there's a content engine underneath it because you're taking in their content. And sure. If you don't have content, part of what you're doing is how do we build content and how does that content look you know, right. cohesive in a single environment. So right. there's a web development effort that's not trivial sure. to, exactly. do, it, to right. do it so that when people visit, they'll take an action. Versus yeah, no, my only go, point was the commerce, the chamber yeah. site is never going to be the place. I agree with that entirely. Because it's a membership-based right. organization and if you didn't... It wouldn't be the their price. site, but they would certainly, but they could be a partner and what that means financially. Totally understand about no porting idea. that content. Right. Conceivably, yeah. in you know, because again, if you're a member, it's be I would think they'd be very happy to have their content ported to yet another site where they could be found. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also, yeah, we got to build all that connectivity, and then we got to flesh it out with all of the other things about Situate that would never be covered by the chamber. Mm -hmm. So right. I totally agree with you. That's that's a, how, could how, be a how about portal so our content can be found? Excuse me. How about portal so our content can be found? Well, that's what I was saying from an EDC standpoint. Yeah. Is as we, you know, if we do an MAPC study, if we start to really flesh out some plans and proposals for various business districts, we need a place to capture that where, um, you know, it can be reviewed and be accessible by the community. I believe we have our a website on the town because we have to. Right, we do right. Right, but right. There's, and there's nothing there. Where our content right. has to be provided because yes. it's publicly. It's almost like a technicality, not right. a marketing tool. Right, correct. We may wish to put certain material on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, you go back to web development, other things, um, and does that bring up a question about staffing? Yes. Well, does, if, 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 if they're going to be grants and filings for those, mm -hmm. those take a long time, a lot of hours. Well, all of this does. I mean, that's what I mean. I think that's one thing we've come to realize over the past year is that I mean, yeah. everything you do takes an enormous amount of time. Right. Uh, even just putting the survey presentation together, let alone conducting it and getting and analyzing results, just you know, mm -hmm. doing it takes sure. time, and you've got a group of seven that has to get together to make the decisions about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when those meeting, those decision meetings turn into working meetings because it's the only time we have, right. it doesn't move. And you know, I think to a certain extent we may have caught a break that the economy is not so good and there hasn't been a lot of uh, development going on, but if we actually wanted to capture opportunities in a better environment, we're not we're positioned to do not. it. Yeah. <clears throat> the question I think, I don't think it's a question that you know, we would benefit and the town would benefit from some level of staffing. Um, what does the planning board have in terms of staffing? It's got two full-time staff, myself and the um, planning board secretary. Well, and I think, you know, the, the easy question is, you know, you've spent a lot of time supporting us. <laughs> so, and, no, it really and, goes up and down and, because yeah. there are a lot of you know, different things that I seem to be responsible for. Yeah. So. Um, and I saw the question you, you would post to the planning listserv in terms of other communities and what they're doing. And I've looked at Hingham and the you know, surrounding communities, and it's nebulous as to how they're actually financing these things. Um, few have anybody designated. Okay. Um, bigger cities do. Yeah. Yeah, most of, the, most of the towns on the South Shore, I don't think, have a separate economic development yeah. staff person. But it might be you know, somebody who's spending 10 hours. Uh, exactly uh, right. And doubling as a grant writer or doing, you know, some other function. You know. I don't know. I, that's, I, I'm not sure what it means. I mean, even if we can identify one person within the current staff that is kind of right. our person to <clears throat> even a, just a one go to person. Right. I mean, it's really helpful that Dan, you know, sees this stuff in the paper and forwards it to us. But the you know, data it's, that's it's available happy. is amazing. Right. But gathering it, compiling it, yeah. You know, looking through it and putting very it into something that you can just, it, Did somebody happen to catch that reading the paper rather um, than somebody who, whose job is to spend an hour a week going through? So why don't we, we, do, we just put a nut in for a half person yeah. and I get some so. sort of salary plug from you that's appropriate? And, 
I think just um, place it in there. I mean, a full person would be a bit yeah. overreach. A half person seems about right. Yeah. Yeah. And I assume you know the bent right now is you know the macro level, and we're going to have to pare this down to something that's reasonable. But I think you know, Laura, you had suggested also in, um, as an alternative to the DLTA, the software. Uh, yeah. And well, I where I got that from was um, someone at another, another yeah. agency who had worked for a town had um, come across some software that has a very good. Um, um, yeah, it's a very good company behind it, which is it says very good. And somehow they've been able to tap into a lot of economic data for well, different local areas. And well, yeah, I mean, what I took a look at it. It, it is interesting. Yeah, I mean, what it so really comes down to is a package that's compiling. It's, a lot of it's census stuff. Uh, so, but they do have some proprietary data for uh, retail uh, and market analysis, which is interesting. Um, it may be an alternative, uh, you know, to getting you know getting a one-year license uh, for that software to pull some of that material together. Because some of that material, if it could be assembled and posted on a website, may be interesting to local businesses who don't have the time or the resources to do anything themselves. And you say, well, here, oh, here's the market analysis for your region. You know, if you're looking to grow or expand or whatnot, uh, it might be interesting to them. Um, that license was four thousand dollars. Um, for the one that does that. Um, the only question I had is whether MAPC has that software. I'd rather spend the $4,000 to have them use their software and their expertise. Yeah. But that brings up another point, which is software. Yeah. You know, whether it's something that's, that would maybe replace something that the MAPC is doing, or, or if there's other software, that's a potential cost that we might want to think about budgeting for. And it's another role for that half person, right? which could be, you know, market analysis yeah. that they can be doing. Because, you know, again, it's, uh, you know, it's quite an effort to try to, try to get, um, you know, you're the only one on our board who has the real expertise using it. So it's not like we can all necessarily chip in and, and figure it out ourselves. So <coughs> that's where I think bus staffing could be very helpful. <coughs> There's got to be you know, some, some uh, cross-pollination between all these different groups and organizations are out there with the, we're using the same data. <coughs> this whole, this whole, I used to, have they had one of those meetings yet that you've sat on? No. Um, the facilities? No, the facilities no, no, no. I would imagine that that study, is, that, that whole project is going gonna, is gonna to incorporate a lot of the stuff that we can use anyway. Well, that's actually the big question is whether they are. I don't know if they are. But yeah. the type of, you know, when you talk about, like, this software, um, that pulls in the census stuff is you can actually pull the census stuff. Um, it, the, the thing with that in by staffing becomes important is you can pull literally yeah. reams of census data, and making sense of it will take you a year uh, to figure out why this characteristic you know is relevant to this one and what it all means and what we should do with it. Um, even the reports that they spit out um, were for the census data. I mean, this is these are the report examples that were sent. And it's primarily sensitive. Right? It's, it's 60 pages. Right. Well, uh, you know, and they do do projections and they do a lot of things that would be interesting to a certain level of business. You know, but I guess what I'm, get, what I'm getting at is I don't know what kind of software we could we, we would all be using. No, I well, mean, it wouldn't be for us. I, I don't right. think that's that's, that's what the I mean. point. We don't have that. But I'm saying that's the pieces to it. I think it's basically saying you're, you're trying to get license to get content. It's licensing right. to get content. And from a from a budgeting a standpoint, it's licensing, and then it's Resources to apply use it, it. Right. apply it. Yes, because we. But they may already exist here in town that we don't know about. It's possible. Some, but we have we have ArcGIS, right? Yeah, That's we, we have one one license for that, yeah. which is the license that I have. But the the um, GIS, uh, I'm sorry, the IT director has put that in the cloud, so more than one you know, can use it at a time, and it. right. So so yeah, we, we do we do maintain that. Yeah. Um, we're looking at you know permitting software and different types of mapping all the time because I think there's kind of a lack of information mm. um, about different mapping systems and what they do and how they work, but everybody's really interested in it. So it should be something that we should figure out what we need in, as opposed to it being a budget item for us, tell them, listen, while you're out looking at, the IT person is looking at well, some of the Well, it might be. Like I mean, the, the this question that <coughs> was posed, <coughs> Laura had uh, found from somebody at another planning agency who had, they, 
as an alternative to the DLTA grants, mm -hmm. they had looked at uh, the reports that they were getting from those types of programs and said, well, I could do that myself if I only had the tool. And so they went out and bought the tool. And he was the planner, the planner for the town, I believe. Uh, and so he, just having that license in hand, was able to generate these reports himself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an add-on to some of our, the existing software that they have, yeah. uh, though this one is actually web-based. Um, but it is economic development specific. So I don't think any other department here would be we'll looking be for sure. it. That's why it would be a line item in our type of a okay. budget. And that's just a real specific example of, you know, we might want to look at including mm -hmm. something right. to purchase that. Um, and, it would, and it wouldn't be necessarily a recurring thing because some of it is one that's only a one-year license. I don't think you economically want to finance it every year. Um, but to pull the data at the early stages of what we're doing and have those reports available. Things like this boot camp, do those cost money for us to attend? If we wanted to send one or two people, so it would be, it would be. That's three, actually. Yeah. Three, okay, good. If you're a member of a, of a town committee commission, yeah, we could, we could do that for free. But again, you know, what we're doing is, I mean, what I'm trying to do yeah, is, budget. I'm trying to anticipate. Right, we want to think about what. Right, and, and so that brings up another, you know, the incidentals is attendance at those kinds of, you know, at workshops or seminars mm -hmm. or those kinds of things. Uh, as we just talked about, it's, it's, it's being able to fund our own seminars or um, workshops that we want to do, to, um, like we do with the Maritime Commission. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think this is very helpful. This is what I had hoped to get out of this, it, which is a bit of a laundry list of the kinds of things that we, um, you know, could legitimately see needing funding for. Now, how we put a number against it is the next step. And uh, yes, to your point, Trish, there's some outages um, as we go through this. Some, I think, you know, you just, you know, we can kind of make some intelligent guesses about what would be it. Actually, I was going to say what could be a reasonable budget for incidentals. And that just makes me wonder, Laura, if, um, if other, you know, other commissions have requested those kinds of things. It would be, and this is um, gets back to what you said earlier, Victor, about some examples. You know, not number one, some some well-crafted budget proposals. Number one, but also just some examples of what some of the other commissions have done. Because for us having been doing this for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, we might not know what we don't know, and we may be able to look at what the uh, Waterways Commission, you know, has budgeted for and look and say, oh, look. You know, the Waterways Commission has an incidental, you know, line item of X amount, and the Planning Board has an incidental line item of, of and it might help us frame some of the um, projections that we make. I think no. that actually all the budgets for this past fiscal year are on the town website. Okay. What are the budget requests? Um, yeah. No, I, I think it's the approved budget with all, I think it's with all the backup information. So it has a budget request and so stuff. So it's got the whole request okay. and the actual yeah, budget that might. is approved. The line items have to be, they have to fit the software template. So you can probably imagine incidentals isn't one that they have. I mean, you have to, right. you have to fit it into what they're. It's okay. Um, well, we can yeah, figure it. We can do that. I don't think it's rockets. You budget on the high side. Or you, you know, there are ways of managing budgeting that you just have to do. And some of those incidentals probably need to include things that other departments need us to cover. Because if we're going to do mapping and prints, I know we've talked about it before, engineering has a <coughs> large plotter, but they don't necessarily budget for using it to the extent we might need it. Yeah, I um, was thinking about that in the last conversation um, right here because I did start working on this map. and. I, that we talked about at 3A, and I have my first little eight and a half by 11, which goes from Cohasset Line down a little bit beyond Henry Turner Bailey. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what you really want to be able to do is to plot the whole thing on yep. one yep. large sheet of paper, and you can't do that here because we don't have a plotter. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't have a working plotter, but from what I'm hearing, the plotter is, is kind of old and a little bit. Oh, um, okay. 
you know, kind of needs to be replaced. So, so we, a, a budget line item would be to be able to do things of that nature, send off a printing. Printing a costs, product, maybe. Product. Yeah. I mean, if we can't do it here, yeah. if we need a map or something like that. So sort of beating a drum, which is, I think, what would be useful is for you, to you, Chris, or you, um, well, you, Chris, to publish the structure of the budget, send it out to everyone, and say, what do you envision in this line item? Right. So I envision four meetings to be held. And in it, I need support, and this is, you know, right. we kind of know what the costs were from the maritime, so we at least model that. Yeah. It's about 100, it was 150 bucks all in. Was, um, is that show budget? No, no, all in, just for, <laughs> just for, to. Donuts and coffee and uh, room <laughs> rental. Right. Something like that. Right. So, in other words, we can just sort of organize that around what we have as a structure and then get back, and within two weeks, I think we would actually have probably a number yeah. That. I think, yeah. And frankly, we could probably look at like <coughs> Cohasset or some of these other towns that have done a lot of good economic development. They probably have on their website, if we have it on our website, they could perhaps have their I don't uh, think EDC Cohasset budget. To do this. No, okay. No. Um, no, I think Situate's kind of unique. I looked at our neighboring communities to see if they were funding economic development by name anyway. And their budgets don't. They're just, they're just doing it. it. Yeah. Uh, actually, around here, it's not, you, fi you do find. Um, like t technically we exist under chapter 40 section 8a you know as uh, state laws there are communities you know they've adopted that but very few have the actual commission in place and even since we didn't until you know two years ago um there are communities like canton and avon or whatever that actually have industrial finance authorities mm -hmm. uh, but they don't finance anything there's no there aren't any line out of budgets for them mm -hmm. okay all right so this budget is due on the 14th, so I think we're going to need to set a couple of milestones between now and then. Um, the first one is, um, let's make sure everybody has the email with the um, outline. Yeah, I have a few also. But basically, um, this is the this is the template. Yeah. And uh, this, no, this we can is, this do is that. From MAPD. And then this is the instruction. Yeah. This is the instruction manual. Okay. Where did that come from? Uh, Laura sent it. To me. So I'll send that to you. Okay. And then you want me to distribute it? Okay. Yes, please. Thanks, Laura. And I will do that tonight. Oh, okay. Okay. And how does the review process work? Um, it's you know, organized uh, by Tricia. You uh, go in and talk to her about your budget and you know, kind of review it with her. And then you go before the selectmen and you have to justify it to them. Then you go before the advisory committee and you justify it to them. And hopefully it all gets included in the, you know, the town's budget for the morning. But it's often whittled down along the way? It can be. And is that a formal meeting? So. The meeting with Tricia? Yeah. No, it, I, mean, I don't know if she would meet with the whole committee or with probably with you. Okay. We, um, to my knowledge, when this was envisioned, the EDC, it was part of a response to an audit, to my recollection, of that something with the rating of the town or something to that effect. It would be great to get that, to find out what was the origin. I believe there's an origin of <coughs> something that occurred that made this be important. Because really? as we, so as we put this together, it would be good because that's the closest form to a mandate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You're talking about recently. You're not talking about way back when the you know industrial development Correct. Was, was, was formed. Correct. So you're talking about last couple of years. Okay. What, were you I didn't know anything about yeah, I haven't heard of that. Yep. I know Dan Monger was, was very... Yeah, um, no, Dan, Danny was kind of spearheaded the whole thing. Yeah, but. very, very involved with it. 
but it's possible that it had some impact on the bond rating, which you know, we all. I believe that was. I believe that was. The, I, believe that was the, I think so too. And I think that's. It's important because that that sure. that's a commitment the town makes to execute against it. Therefore, it has to budget to execute against it. And if we're looking for something that underpins it, that's well, yeah. that's the thing, right? But also, I well, think the you know, bond you, rating you, is going to help us borrow a hundred million dollars to build up. Well, there would be, I haven't because I haven't looked at it yet. I mean, the the rating was just increased last week, and mm -hmm. there should be a, there's a report uh, somewhere. Maybe that's um, in there. I don't know, Laura, if you have access to the, the full report or not. I mean, you can get the no, press releases online. But uh, I don't know if that makes reference to it. I wasn't, hmm. I haven't seen any. I'd be, be curious to know the order if there was an impetus related to well, that. Well, I'll ask Dan on and I take I that one. Yeah. I'll, ask, I'll ask Dan about that. But I also so think I if you go into the um, our mission statement, I think the question is can we carry out our mission uh, without a budget? You know, can we really deliver against the mission? Well, we learned that we can't. <laughs> well, I think that's right. And I think part of this response needs to demonstrate um, some of the challenges that we faced trying to deliver on a mission with no money. Mm -hmm. So, Correct. the proposal writers in the room can uh, figure out how to wordsmith this. Use the word synergy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So let's talk about milestones again. So this is something that, that what we mail into Trisha on the fourteenth. Yeah. Okay. And then sometime after the fourteenth, there will be a review and yeah, with Trisha sure. and some yeah. some part of our group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like okay. the week of the twentieth. It's in the they've calendared. Oh, they have. Yeah, in the manual, there's a schedule of. Oh, there is. Okay, I'm got. It runs all the way through the town meeting, actually. Um, and it looks like you know, we would submit on the 14th, and the following week, uh, the administrator is going to be meeting with everybody. Uh, and then it goes through, similar to what I think with the where we did engage last year with the meeting with the selectmen, and then meeting with the advisory committee, and then okay. You know, going through the whole. Um, so, I mean, I'm thinking. Well, I mean, there's so many different ways you could you could address this. You could meet with Trisha early on and ask her, you know, just kind of summarize everything that you want to talk about about the need for yeah. some of the things that you talked about and ask her prior um, submission. How we should put it together? She has any suggestions, suggestions. or whatever? Yeah. But, um, I think we get the structure out to the group mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. You know, we we start putting some details on it as to, like as Victor said, you know, the number of meetings we expect. I mean, you know, with some reality as to how many we actually could pull off. Yeah. Or how many we'd like to pull off if we had the staff that we're gonna propose and that kind of, you know. I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, don't be surprised if things do get shot down. But oh, yeah. you might as well go in. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to make uh, we're going to make a very strong well, I think case that's the for point, it. Which is, if it's the, the the shoot down has to be part of the initial commitment the town made to execute on EDC, so they can't live in two worlds. Yeah. So can't live it. We have it, so therefore we're good, and we we decided to zero it out. That those are two worlds. So yeah, no, I think we need to make uh, our case for what we think we need, <coughs> and uh, then we'll just see how it goes. So I have the, the, that template and the instructions. Let me, why don't I try to fill a few things out? You rock. And then I'll distribute it. Oh, man. A few. That's the kind of can Emphasis do attitude we've been hoping for. A few. That's why we chose you leader, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be able to delegate. You stink at it. Yeah, I know. Um, Okay, I will try to do that by, like you're going to try to do something by Sunday, I'll try to do that by Sunday. Get a, a first draft. For the Patriots game. Okay. Great. I think we can put number eight to bed. So, 
Point number 10 on our agenda is the Economic Development Boot Camp in Plymouth. So I missed number seven, huh? Well, we can revisit That's number seven. So no, what we were talking about... I can catch, I can read in the minutes. Yeah. Self-explanatory. Yeah. Three plus one, that's all you need. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll look at the minutes. All right. I think we had you down for a bunch of stuff for that, though. Cool. I'll see you in the minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll check the minutes. Okay, so um, I think I shared that email with everybody. I remember seeing it. I don't recall the details. Yeah, and I one. didn't make a hard copy of it. Yeah, but it's when is it? December 12th, from 8 to 4 at the Indian Pond Country Club in Kingston. Golf. And um, yeah, why don't you guys, if you want, take a, take, a, <laughs> take a quick look at it. But I, I won't be here. I'll be in California. I don't believe that. I, I'd love to go, but I don't think I can make it. But I think it would be great if somebody could. Sure. One or two people could go. Yeah. That's good. I mean, it's kind of a big, big doing, commitment. Uh, but. Credit for this? AICP? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything uh, that says that there will be, but. Yeah. Are we municipal employees? That's the end incentive. Yeah. <laughs> we are? Yeah. We'll be, okay. well, tell me what that was, Colin. Uh, I, I still have my planning certification that I need to maintain, so I have to do a certain number of credits. Let's see. Every it would be years. nice if it's so, out. So oh, well, that's what I was Not asking. purely I altruistic for you. No, not at all. But, uh, what you got to love is honesty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where it's put on by this chamber, yeah, I think they have to pay to get this. I know, I know. So, I'm guessing it's not. Yeah, but I'm they're pretty not. stingy about mm -hmm. allowing. Has this, is this, is how many years have they been doing this thing? Or is this a kind of a new? Um, some of the names of these people, I know, um, because they've been around for a long time, so the people are talking this thing. Um, Did you want to see Trish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> so the point is, if you're interested... I think I might try to do it if I mm. can. <coughs> what is the 12th? Actually, you know, the 12th is the uh, day of our next meeting. Yeah. Time to send for so There can be a class presentation. <laughs> Show and tell. A book report of the. I get credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of credit. <laughs> we get tons of credit. That goes to the intangible comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. We could, make a, we could make a certificate for you. Yeah. Give you a cupcake. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so let me know. Um, yeah, what, what do you, I'll, yeah. I'll put Colin down there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd probably <coughs> like to go. We'll too. go start next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be great. And Trish, if you wouldn't mind adding in the minutes, just um, let those, just mention that everybody's invited to go if they want. Mm -hmm. Can I have lunch so, with Colin? So that, uh, <laughs> do what? Jen want to go? So I can have lunch with Colin. Oh, man. Huh? People get paid good money for that. Okay, so let's talk about other business. Is there any other business? I have one piece of other business I'd like to talk about, but are there any others that we would like to bring up? Um, I just wanted to bring up a uh, little sample of what I'm trying to do for a map. And yeah, see guys I'd love like to see it. that. Okay. So um, <coughs> what, this, what I'm trying to do here is I'm taking 3A, because we don't have a plotter, this is going to be a little bit Cockeyes. shaky, mm -hmm. uh, but you know it's definitely going to be kind of a vertical format, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking. And what this is, is you start 3A, the green is town open space that's you know uh, dedicated. protected, dedicated mm -hmm. to conservation use, can't be... Huh. Can't be taken out without a great deal of difficulty, you know, acts of the legislature mm -hmm. and things like that. These outlined kind of light blue shaded areas are wetlands. So 
you know, that these are the wetlands according to DEP. So the, 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 the this little st the stuff that's so the stippled areas, so the trees, areas. Those, those, okay, yeah, okay. So it's kind of your local yeah. standard for, yeah. for wetlands plants. So I started, I, I had it at a different scale. This is one inch is 100 feet. Um, this scale, I think, will be pretty good for showing a fair amount on one sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to see if this was the kind of thing you all were, Very you know, would be mm -hmm. useful. Very yeah. helpful. So I'm sorry, what's the yellow? Oh, the yellow is um, residentially zoned. Okay. Um, it's, you know, basically one acre zoning. This is your half acre zoning. This is a business zone up here. That's a house? That's the Rotten Gun kinda? Club. Oh, it's Rotten Gun Club. Okay, so these, these are all... So, so in but this area, there is no houses, yeah, or or yeah, most of the little buildings are th these are buildings. These right, are right. Outlines. So this is this is zone residential, but there's nothing on now. Right, but, yeah. Just the run gun club mm -hmm. and their property is out there, <clears throat> and that's their property. Necessarily yeah, not or not sure necessarily. Own, uh, yeah, that's their property, and I'm not sure if they own some of the rest of this or somebody else owns it. Okay. That's great. That'd be yeah, good. No, I think that'll, that'll be, be good. Okay, well, yes. good. I'll keep going. I do. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. No, thank you for doing that. That's uh, going to ultimately be super helpful. Mm -hmm. <coughs> do you have any? And it would be good to get that on, like get that plotter thing. Yeah. Well, that was the point. Is, I mean, that'd be know, huge. Just yeah. to be able to print it. I mean, I mean, the, re the reality is, if, if we're going to start doing well, yeah, some I mean, you could do the whole town, but you know, you lose your detail. I mean. Uh, right. Ultimately, but, so if you did it for your, uh, but I think your three areas. Yeah, yeah. I think right. I, what we'd like to do is, yeah. you know, eventually. I mean, the focus. We started talking about this for three A. Yes. Um, so, but north northern situate. Yeah. Yes, being the development district. You know, you do yeah. that, and then the harbor, and then the driftway. Gotcha. Or Greenbush Driftway. I think it's critical because if we're going to start talking economic development, we're gonna, we need to know. You know. Well, we need to see like exactly develop. what that is. Uh, you know, this is protected. You know, and then this might not be protected, but the wetlands are here. And right. So, right, what, what right, do you have right. left? Right. This little piece. And that's actually what, you know, we're struggling with is that, you know, we started this a year ago with what does the town own? And wasn't a lot of opportunity. The stuff. Right. And I think, I think it'd be very important to take a look at those types of maps and try to, try to, try to pick an area that we think has the potential, whether it does or doesn't, mm -hmm. and see if we can get it. Take a look at the zoning. Try to get it rezoned. Try to get that 100 yard, you know, whatever that's called. What do they call that? The 100 yard <coughs> green area. Or green belt. Yeah. yeah. You know, get well, that lifted. And, and that's, well, let's, let's, that's and that's where it starts to raise the question. Put a because when you look at 3A and you start seeing, well, this is already protected. You have to go to state right. legislature to get it removed, which, you know, that's an entirely different discussion. Then you've got well, wetlands. Possible. I've talked to them, and that's possible. Very possible. Okay, I've gone. I've done it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it, well, okay. I, it's 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 not realistic. I don't think. But okay. anyway, it's a whole different discussion. But then when you look at wetlands on top of we'll it, talk about it over lunch. You can <laughs> you can look at what you might do in terms of wetlands development, which is pretty limited. But maybe yeah. you could get creative. They did old colonies on wetlands. Mm. Uh, but you start looking at well, what kind of development pattern do we really have left? Right. Uh, and is it worth? Is three A worth anything? If that's our alternative, and maybe you know, and that's why um, what we're left with is what we've got: the harbor, yeah, what we consider to situate now, and you know, the driftway. The driftway probably does have uh, the, the, most, the most the most land. land. It's well, that'll really the visual will help us. Yeah, the, the that's what I mean. Just just to be able to see so it that and see it quickly. Yeah. Correct. Is, I think it would be amazing to have that like right. on a wall that we can just. Yeah, you know. I think it's critical. And you know the whole school thing is going to make economic development more important than ever. Yeah. So it's important to look at you know easy, well, medium, difficult, short term, long term. Yeah, I mean I think at some point you know if we're the capital study and the school together, I mean they're talking about 120 million, you know, ballpark figures. Well, if you're going to finance 120 million in a 30-year bond, you can figure out what that means in annual debt service yeah. and say, well, so we need to come up with you know. A million dollars, <laughs> or five hundred thousand dollars a year in additional new revenue. Where does that come? Right. Because what does that mean? That's to you an know, individual when you, when tax. You translate it's it. probably and it's probably worthwhile actually <coughs> putting that same logic in the budget. Yeah. As a proxy, saying we don't know this to be true, but that's not a bad outline for right. how to right. think of economic development, which mm -hmm. is your asset and your debt service. Right. Mm -hmm. 
No question. I mean, you do you, 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 a lot you, of new development. <laughs> that special town meeting, we were sitting together, and we missed an opportunity, but thought of it a little too late. As, as you're hearing all the people talking about, you know, what a, you know, what a, what a need we have in town, and um, the schools falling up, falling down around us, and all this this uh, um, emotional stuff. You know, I was when Chris and I was sitting there. I'm like, geez, you know, I think we're missing an opportunity here. We really need some. We should really get up and say. It's just as an opinion, we'd be crazy to be, to be talking about this without at least talking about some kind of economic development. I mean, make sure that our town officials uh, get real about economic development because if we're yeah. looking at adding another hundred million dollars of debt service to the town, we really need to figure out how we're going to pay for this thing. And that really is the, you know, the the uh, um, you know the elephant in the room. Um, but we decided might be, we should do that. They ended the discussion. We talked about that right voted. after the vote. <laughs> 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 I thought about yeah. Honestly, God, it's like geez, I think uh, we should have jumped up. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll, send, we'll send two other guys. Why were you there? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> we could have. You would have thought of it. I, maybe like that. Victor doesn't vote. Um, <laughs> and then um, that's, that's not public. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think I, you know. But but to that end, we may think about. Um, can we, as an economic development committee, or one of us, put some kind of a um, um, opinion piece in the paper? Yes. Well, on that. We, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I mean, yeah. I think there's a t there's going to be another time for that, mm -hmm. uh, and I definitely think that we need to be an active voice in that discussion mm -hmm. because we uh, we are going to be. Yeah. You need to be. I want to go back, Laura, to your mapping, and I just wanted to ask if you have any um, any timing for how you see that coming together. Any, are you able to, to look into the future and say, hmm, this looks like two more weeks or two more months or two more years? I'd say probably two more weeks. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. Yeah. And aside from plotting, you know, if we put the plotting issues aside, I mean, these could be printed PDF and put on our website. So we, I mean, at least we could go on and look at them and, and okay. be able to have a, a reference point. <coughs> you know, something comes up, you know, that before a meeting or whatever, we want to check something. You know, we could actually log in or just go to the web, our website, and pull up the map. Mm -hmm. And if you can zoom in on an area and get that detail, great. You know, and then you don't have to worry about having the. Then you don't have to worry about having the paper and the plotting issues sure. resolved. Because yeah. Yeah. But I think can, we need can to get you overlay that on like Google out. Maps or something like that? There you go. Yeah. Can you, could you do, could you create an overlay for that? That's what this is. This is the same. I just I have <coughs> like aerial photos, so I just have to, but I had overlaid the wetlands and the parcels over the aerial photos. And it's, you did. Yeah, and uh, it, it's interesting when you what you start to see are well when you look at the school site um, between the high school and Cushing. Yeah, there's a piece of land that's all woods. Right. That's bigger than Cushing. Yeah. Um, and that's why when you look at, well, if we're going to site something and do the campus, fine, site it there. This, just on a basic visual, looks about the same size as Old Colony. Yeah. The site that we're on now. Uh, you'd have to design it around the pond, but right. that's a design condition. So right. They do with that all. That's the new uh, yeah, design Old Colony around <laughs> the train station and the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. I still don't understand how they built there, but they, that's actually what they <coughs> so They built something there, given all the wetlands. Right. Um, mm. And we have wetlands all over the place along 3A. Not that you want to you know, make it a policy to go fill them, uh, <laughs> or that you can even, but there yeah, are sand. There are ways. That's what designers are for. Right. Okay. You Great. Know, a tough problem. You know. Well, thank you. That's going to be really helpful. So then don't worry about that so much. Mm. Those well, I think you have to worry about it. But, but, I mean, but you, think, but, but not, not be, not be stonewalled by the fact that they're Do you have the well. issue? Oh. I don't think you, Nixon, <coughs> as a for instance, can you get this whole area here? All about progress. As a, for instance. Yeah, but that's when you look at what Laura's done. This is protected, you know, Article 97 stuff, I think. So let's keep moving. I ha Does anybody have other business to share or bring up? I wanted to uh, bring up a, I, a, an opinion. And um, I feel I would like to... Um, I'll propose that we, uh, I, I think it would be valuable to meet bi-weekly rather than monthly. Bi-monthly rather than monthly. Mm -hmm. Every two months? Bi-weekly. Bi-weekly. <laughs> every two weeks. weeks so every two have, weeks. I'll just, just say every two weeks <laughs> yeah. instead of monthly. <laughs> Thank you. Fortnightly. And the reason <laughs> I say that is because I do think, you know, we have, um, you know, we have some 
a number of short-term initiatives that we've got to get done before the end of the year. But I also feel like going into this next year, um, you know, going through the process with the survey, um, boy, it eats up a lot of time when you're only meeting on a monthly basis, number one. Number two, I think that we lose traction from, you know, from month to month. So I know that early in our tenure as a group, we were meeting on a bi-weekly basis uh, twice a month. And I just feel like um, we have enough to do and to talk about, especially when we focus on you know the three plus one. Uh, we, we have enough just there to keep us busy on a, on a twice monthly basis. And I think that it, it keeps people more engaged and helps uh, us um, keep traction. So I wanted to kind of see what you guys think about that. Wow. Um, I am so is, glad I, to have that kind it is, of... It is stipulated <coughs> to me <coughs> on whether we do work between the two weeks because what happened before was right. work wasn't getting done between meetings and so the me work was attempted to be done in group think in meetings which all it did is you know, commit us to being leaving there around 1030 at night with nothing accomplished. Right. So it's really, yeah. it turned into a bad process. The even in this meeting, there's a set of to-dos coming out of it. If we don't do the to-dos and get them out to people in advance right. of the meeting with pre-reads, <coughs> the meeting begins the place where you do work, and that's not effective. Totally agree. So if we want to do semi-monthly, then... Um, or every two weeks. Or every two weeks, whatever, whichever comes first, um, then that's fine. The meetings will be shorter, but it's really all about pre-reads coming in, the agenda being known, because if you want to, we want to make pride progress on a three plus one, it has to, we have to get work done between. That's what happened last time. We went to monthlies because it just got so painful. Yeah. Right. And I think, because I, I, I agree, I think it's necessary. I don't know if I could be any more productive. I mean, it, it, I miss more meetings. I, mean, so I, I can tell you, I would not be able to make a lot, you know, that frequently. Um, and in terms of getting things done, I think that's exactly the issue is uh, in between mm -hmm. to just move that quickly. It's, it's the whole reason we need staff support. We just yeah. can't. I mean, we're, tr we're trying to actually be a working commission. Right. And we just, we really just don't have the ability to be. You know, we're, we're volunteers and uh, only have so much time available. Um, I'm willing to try it again. I think we do have a clearer focus now than we did a year ago, uh, and maybe optimistically that's enough. Well, if I just take the three plus one, that means the agenda is set, is set right? Yeah. There are at least four agenda items. That's, yeah. Where are we in those four items? Yeah. And I think that's right. And, I think and that it's, it's I really on those, on those, whether those, the groups, lead, whoever those, those teams are, can work and make progress. And if they don't, it's a five-minute budget, you know, five-minute slot. I got nothing done. Okay, move on. The, the error we made was attempting to, we just chatted. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the 10 goals, though, were for a while. It was, I mean, we had our agenda. It was the 10 goals. That was the agenda for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what it was out well, of bioweekly, you know, <clears throat> schedule, it was turning into couldn't make any progress on this. Yep. Lift to number five, couldn't make any progress on this. Yep. And I think that's, um, you know, I I think we have that sometimes whether we're meeting monthly or I think that's or, true or bi-weekly and I think and that's kind of what I I totally agree with you I don't want to use these meeting as as the form to go oh yeah I totally forgot about that let's talk about it right um, but we've got to um, we've got to hold our each ourselves and our group accountable for the deliverables you know when we go off from that meeting I, I think we have to you know as a group agree that it's you know it's not acceptable to just you know take your two-week deadline and make it a one-month deadline or a six-week deadline because then it does defeat the purpose of getting together just to find out that no one's done anything. So what I'm trying to do is I feel, I just personally feel like we, we're losing traction a little bit. I, we haven't had all seven of us at a meeting in months. And I, I totally appreciate the challenges with everybody's schedule. And I, I, on one hand, I totally agree with you, Colin, that meeting more frequently is going to make it even difficult, more difficult to get everybody, but we're not doing a very good job. Now, this is the most we've had at a meeting in, in quite a while, I think. We've pretty much been, uh, you know, had, lucky to get four. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's a, you know, and it's always somebody else, but I, I want to try to get 
that traction back. And um, I agree, Victor, that if we can, you know, if the three plus one is what we're going to do, that's going to result in a bunch of tasks. And, and if we can get everybody pitching in, and if we can get agreement that, you know, we are going to, to devote some time between meetings to making progress, and these meetings become, you know, the forum to, you know, update everybody on, on the progress that's been made. Um, I don't know. I'm just hoping maybe it'll re-engage everybody and um, and maybe kind of unify the group a little bit more. So that's you know, um, that's just my thought. And I just feel like with those big initiatives, if we only meet on a monthly basis, it'll be you know August and and we'll still be getting stuff off the ground. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna put a budget forth, we have to defend we're, the budget and put points on the board, right? right. So the key thing is what makes us work best. Um, I still believe getting the deliverables out and making real progress. The, the meeting, <coughs> the meeting cadence is a secondary issue, but I don't, I don't mind it being biweekly. Then yeah. that's fine. But the real issue is getting the work done. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, let's think about this. I'm just, I want to just brainstorm on this. Think about this a different way. If it's not the cadence of of the meeting frequency, you know, I agree. what I want to do is I want to make progress. So whether it's you know in a, in a two week framework or a four-week framework. I don't really care. I just want I want this commission to be able to look back in six months and and, and note some accomplishments and some progress. So mm -hmm. so that's really the question. And so let's change the discussion for a second and talk about what do we need to do to do that? Is it get the, get the, get a, the focus areas have not been flushed out right. for a long time and therefore no one knew what they were doing. It wasn't an issue of cadence. It was an issue of what are yeah. we doing? So that is a prerequisite for us being productive is what are we working on? What okay. makes sense? We've had, we talked around it, we've had meetings, but no one's said this is the plan and here we go. So now we have a forcing function, which is the end of, end of season, and off we go. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, think it's like that simple to me. The frequency has to happen now, I don't think, you know, with what we've got on the table at the moment. So. <clears throat> We've, we do have to flesh out some of these things. So in the process of putting our budget together, if we we should we should end up with something that's concrete enough to continue meeting that frequently going forward. But if we don't, then I think we have to re-examine that. I think that makes total sense. Um, if you agree that we've got the work to keep us busy on a more frequent basis, I just yeah, I, I we certainly have the work. I don't you know I think we're starting to define the focus of it. So I think those tasks are going to be there and they'll be assigned. I think the reality is we all only have so much time to do them. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we may be overly optimistic to think that we're going to be able to accomplish these things in two week intervals. It's a silly question, okay. but Cohasset doesn't have an economic development committee? Committee? I, I don't know yeah. if they do or not. We don't think they do because there's no budget for it. There's no. Well, they don't we're have. Kind of with, we're kind of unique with that respect. With respect you to that. don't. You don't find line item budgets in their bigger budgets. That's not to say. Are you asking a budgetary question? You're asking what, how often do they meet? <clears throat> don't care. I'm asking how do how do they all of a sudden, you know, within two years, there's you know. Condos up that because are because they have the zoning on the, on land that's developable. Okay. Then I think you know, what could make us more effective is if we take a look at maps like this and find. And we, we need to seriously find out where can we develop and just start figuring those aspects of this whole program out. Where can we develop? Start seeing if we can if we can if there's some zoning that that, that restricts us. Try to get the zoning changed, and start to look at that piece of land and say, well, okay, here's a piece of land that we could be that could be developed. What can go in there? And then start, you know, like like really take on a project. As opposed to well, to me that's the what the three plus one is. Uh, three plus one is just North Situate Harbor and a driftway. The big areas where we know we have enough contiguous land, existing businesses and right. infrastructure to work with. Yeah, basically, go deep on all those three. Yeah, so I think that engaging that, that's the developers, engaging local businesses in those areas. I think it's about time we start doing that. Land, right, and that's where we were saying we're going to need a point person. 
for each one of those three areas, mm -hmm. and, and maybe, I mean, there's seven of us, maybe, and, and Victor, you're a point per person on the facilities audit, which is the plus one. I don't think it can be a one point person. No, I'm saying no, maybe yeah, maybe we pair up and, well, and there may we have not there. Right, there's got seven people. Should, should, should be one. Right. Victor yeah, takes the, two for each. the takes plan. the capital plan, and then we split into teams and take each, you know, two of us take which an Which actually makes sense. That's, that, that, that will make us more accountable when we have yeah. someone to. Right. And the only so, thing I would say, I, I'm okay with biweekly as, as long as we put a rule. There's, there's no mandate to have us have long meetings. No, right. Right. We can have a half hour meeting. There's nothing worse oh, yeah. than Absolutely. trying to fill, fill air. Yeah, agreed. I have an idea, you know, those sort of yeah. circumspect. Um, yeah. So, well, ideas are good. The other thing I, I want to make a, into the, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have an idea of a new item. Yeah, let's yeah, make yeah. it seven plus one. And right. Here's my, right, you know, right. like, uh, I'm going to make a stray comment, and then I want to just come back to the timing issue. And my stray comment is, um, I feel like those who attend the meeting need to be empowered to delegate when, when necessary to those who can't make the meeting. And I'm interested in, in what you guys think about that. I think some of the times we have he, we've been slowed down because you know somebody wasn't there, and it's like, well, in the next meeting when they're there, we'll bring this back up again. And I, I think that if we have a quorum, we should we should go. I agree. Oh, yeah, I entirely agree. Well, quorum carries. Yeah. Okay. So going back to the timing issue. Majority rules. Yeah. Going back, well, in, but you know what? I sometimes, <laughs> I personally would feel guilty about saying, okay, we're going to give this to so and so. They're not here, but that's their job. You know, that's going to. Committees be do it all thing. the time. But I think we need to do that, and I, I think we've been. Um, I'm, it's not a bad thing, but I think we've been very polite in the way that we've, you know, handled things, and I think we just need to, um, as what we're talking about is, let's get our hands around an initiative, and now let's really start to, to um, make it happen. And that's going to mean, you know, each of us carrying some weight and uh, delegating where we need to, and, um, and see if we can get that energy back. I'm still confused about timing, because, I, again, I like where we're going with what we're talking about? Do we need it to do it every two weeks for a little while, or Let's go every two weeks? Or we're, we're in a cycle. Let's do it two weeks and see what we. Let's. I think we could yeah, probably I mean, do it like for the next two. three or four sets, you know, like through January or maybe February, and then reevaluate. Yeah. Right. That's exactly what. Yeah. I mean, we're going to this budget cycle. I second the motion. Okay. So, uh, can we have a motion made? So moved. What? So moved. I no. second it. Second it. So, all in favor of meeting bi-weekly until. We move months. otherwise. That every two weeks. Yes. Every, every two weeks. Uh, all in favor. Aye. Okay. Aye. So okay. Just, just a housekeeping. Oh, sorry. I interrupted. No, go ahead. Let's get our eyes in there first, and then. Well, so um, we we have our next meeting on the twelfth, which is actually about two weeks. And then, uh, as we all go to our calendars, stupid calendars. It's Christmas or the day after. It is. <laughs> The 12, no. Good, so everybody should be available. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was going somewhere. So then you're coming in, some of you are coming in and meeting with the planning board on the 20th? So the 20th we have a meeting with the planning board, which is a Thursday. That's the uh, the Thursday after our meeting on Wednesday the 12th. Planning board, I cannot attend that. Okay. Um, Not that you need me. Why don't we plan to meet on December 12th? We'll have a meeting with the planning board for those who can make it on the 20th. And then how about we make our next meeting, the, the next, uh, the first Wednesday in, ja in January is the 2nd. Do you want to try to do the, uh, the 9th and the 23rd of January? That's not quite two weeks, but get us out of the holidays. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. To the extent I know my calendar, sure. But I mean, Trish, if you could, if you could document yeah. this, that number yeah. one, we passed the motion that we're going to meet yeah. on a roughly bi-weekly basis with the holidays take, being taken into consideration. Uh, we have these two meetings in December. Our first, our two meetings in January will be the 9th and the 23rd. Um, and then why don't we pencil in for February, we'll pencil in the 6th and the 20th, which is which is two weeks after the 23rd. And we'll just take, let's take it out that far and see at the end of February where we stand. Yep. 
that works. Okay. Um, is everybody okay with Maritime Center? I mean, personally, this would be preferred because it's such an easy thing, but it's often booked. I like so, to go to the Maritime Center. Maritime Center? Okay, then I'm going to see if we can. Hold oh. that schedule. Okay. We're going to be indoors. We yeah. <laughs> We're not meeting on the deck. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for um, letting me talk about that. I appreciate that. Um, now, anything else? And so I think I filed my agenda. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn is the next one. Good. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Aye. Good meeting, everybody. Aye. Uh, yeah.